Thank you, Pius. Let's now dissect the rise in cases. And we have here in Lagos, Dr. Sunday Luro, a medical practitioner, also the past secretary, Nigerian Medical Association, Lagos. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me here. And from Indiana, Dr. Abdulaziz Barko, a PhD candidate, health policy and management, Indiana University, joins us via Skype. Glad to have you. Thank you for having me. All right, let's begin with you, uh, Dr. Bako. Tell us about the restrictions, uh, especially where you are, and perhaps if there is an ease and all of those efforts to stemming the pandemic in the United States. Um, so we are, we are at the stage where a lot of states are easing restrictions on movement and the restrictions that um, are supposed to increase social distancing, for example, in, the, in Indiana. Where I am, um, the restrictions to movement have been lifted in many areas, uh, particularly the um, non-essential businesses are allowed to be open and in some, with some strict regulations. Uh, religious places are allowed also to be open. Um, a lot of you know the restrictions that were in place were lifted, but that was you know was made possible after a lot of. Uh, studies that were conducted to get to know the extent of the infection in the state. All right. Tell us um, about, we're hearing from The Guardian reporting uh, that some people are using the virus as a weapon. Uh, several reports like a Michigan man who wiped his nose and face on the shirt of a store employee um, who was actually trying to enforce the use of wearing a face mask. Uh, also, a Florida uh, a man coughed and spat on police and threatened to spread the virus. Uh, some of these people have been arrested and also another person in Texas. Um, do you think that the virus is being used as a weapon against uh, police, retail clerks and all of these people who are trying to ensure that it doesn't spread? It is very possible for people to use this virus as a biological weapon, especially for people who know they are infected and they are asymptomatic, and maybe they have some kind of uh, other motives to uh, spread kind of hate or do some uh, hate crimes. Um, but that's something that, you know, as I mentioned, is possible in London. I have uh, seen the news of a woman, of a Congolese woman that was killed or died as a result of COVID-19 after she was being spat on by a uh, person. And I think this is something that governments need to work really hard on to prevent. Lagos here, Dr. Luro, you're saying that we're passing the 5,000 mark. Lagos is still the epicenter. What's your observation as to um, health workers, especially in Lagos, and how they're faring? Right. Uh, uh, to, to, to start with, uh, it, it is unfortunate that uh, we are here again, uh, having passed through uh, this kind of experience in the past, even though the magnitude it is far less than this. Uh, I am referring to the issue of uh, Ebola virus. Uh, it is expected that when you have such a situation, you want to plan ahead. You want to consolidate, especially when you have recorded some level of success. Unfortunately, again, we didn't take the advantage of the sources of the Ebola uh, epidemic, the war against Ebola. We won clearly, but we didn't consolidate. What this translates to is this. That means that in terms of preparedness and response, we, we we, to a certain extent, relaxed. We didn't build up on those gains. So therefore, when you have a situation like this, it is the health workforce and the entire citizen that will be at the receiving end. But, but in this fight against this pandemic, what would you say the biggest challenge is? The biggest challenge in this for health workers, it is the issue of the availability of protective tools, the so-called PPEs, the personal protective equipment. Unfortunately, again, even prior to this moment, we have issue with the, with the standard precautionary measure because we do not even have the basic, most times they are not enough, to even be able to observe 
no standard infection prevention and control measures. So now coming back to the era of COVID-19, you require some level of upgrading, so to say. So meaning that those basic tools that is generally on a routine basis, when I'm attending to a patient or a nurse is seeing a patient, supposed to be wearing gloves or observe other measures. Those ones were not enough. Now you now have a COVID that you require some level of sophistication. You need things like suits. You even need things like face masks, the, the common surgical or medical face masks. They are not enough. Everybody is running out of scope. But prior to this, we do not even have them in that sufficient level. So therefore, it, it increases the risk of health workers contracting this infection. We'll, we'll come back to you with regards to some of the things that uh, we need to be doing. But let's go uh, back to Dr. Bako, and that is, do you see Africa as the next epicenter of coronavirus with projections and studies, even uh, a few of the things that the World Health Organization is saying, seeing as, you know, our numbers are increasing and Nigeria passing the 5,000 mark? Um, yes, uh, we are at the stage where, you know, uh, the number of cases are increasing at an accelerating rate. And I think uh, governments in Africa, that's what they should be looking at. They should be watching out for the Dublin time of their disease. For example, in Nigeria, we had about uh, roughly about 1,000 cases around April 24th, and um, that increased to about 2,000 that by April 30th. You know, that's a Dublin time of about six days. Um, so we should be watching out for that kind of Dublin time. How many times, how many days does it take for the number of cases to double? Another thing that we need to look at also is the mortality rate. How is our mortality rate changing? Because as the healthcare system is being filled to capacity, the number of deaths will continue increasing. And those are the kinds of things that we need to be on the watch out for. And, uh, you know, also look at other things such as the personal protective equipment for health workers that my colleague has mentioned and other, you know, measures that would increase testing capacity across uh, states. All right. Finally, to you, um, Dr. Luro, what do you want the government to be doing, Lagos State, the federal government, to ensure that we can fight this? I think the first thing is uh, communication. As it is today. We, we, are, we have done so well, especially considering the effort of uh, NCDC and the Presidential Tax Force. Also in Lagos State, the EOC and the ECDEC commander, His Excellency, everybody is doing fine. However, we have to move forward, move further. The issue of risk communication and community engagement, because you will, you will see if in your neighborhood you see people hanging face masks, they're not wearing it properly. And most people, they are not even convinced that this thing exists. So what it means is that we have to involve very critically people at the community level, like estate association, landlord association, and the rest. I, aside that, we have to also strengthen collaboration. Thank God today, as of yesterday, the federal government has now incorporated the professional health association mm. into the, the, the fight. So, so essentially against, all of the stakeholders? All of the stakeholders. All right. Then you also have to ensure cooperation because there's nothing you are going to achieve if you don't have intersectorial. We, we'll definitely keep talking about this, mm. but, but I wish we had more time. We would like to thank you uh, for joining us. Uh, Dr. Sande Lero, medical practitioner and past secretary at MA Lagos, and also Dr. Uh, Abdulaziz Barko, PhD candidate, health policy and management in the U.S. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us.